Hi, it's Steve. Today we're going to show you how to change the impeller and seal kit on your dishwasher, and it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a quarter inch nut driver, a 5 16 nut driver, a number 20 Torx driver, and a pair of slip joint pliers. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, we will need to remove the dishwasher from the cabinets, so we're going to begin by disconnecting power to the dishwasher. We'll also remove the mounting screws for the tabs at the top of the dishwasher tub. We'll next remove the four quarter inch hex head screws that secure that lower access panel in place. We'll remove that so that we can then access the inlet water supply to the valve and also the electrical supply to the junction box where we'll need to disconnect those. Once we've done that, we can then pull the dishwasher out of the cabinets and then we'll lay it gently on its back. And remember to remove all of the dishes first. Now that we've disconnected the inlet water supply and the electrical supply, our next step before we completely pull the dishwasher out of the cabinet will be to remove the lower rack and set that aside. And then we're also going to loosen this lower wash arm assembly. There's a large plastic nut at the bottom of that wash arm that will just unthread counterclockwise. You should be able to do that just by hand and then lift that assembly up, remove it, and set it aside. We can then close the dishwasher door up, and then we'll pull the dishwasher the rest of the way out of the cabinets, and then we'll gently lay it on its back. Now to do this repair, we are going to remove the whole motor and pump assembly from the bottom of the tub. So we've already disconnected the lower wash arm from the inside of the tub. We'll next need to remove this small hose on the side of the pump, and there's probably going to be some water in there, so just keep a towel handy to catch any of that. We've already gone ahead and removed the drain hose because it was easier to do that and give you a better view of a repair, but you would also find some water in that as well. So using our pliers, we're just going to squeeze that clamp and slide it along the hose. Then carefully twist that hose back and forth till you break the bond and then it should pull off of that pump housing. Now next we'll disconnect the wire harness, so just depress the locking tab, pull the harness straight off of the motor. Now next we're going to remove the clip that's on the end of that motor. That holds the motor to this wire bracket. So using our pliers, we just grasp the edge of that clip and work it back and forth until it pops off. Set that aside, and we can lift that right off the end of the motor shaft, and that will release it. And lastly, we're going to remove this inlet hose to the pump, and we'll do that by loosening the 5 16 screw on the clamp, and then you should be able to just grasp that motor and pump assembly, pull it out of the bottom of the tub. and then lift up on it to pull it over that hose. Now we can then take the motor and pump assembly and we'll set it on a suitable work surface where we can change the impeller. Now with the complete pump assembly out on a suitable work surface, we'll start by taking this inlet filter arrangement off of the pump. And it just threads into the pump body. And then you can just pull that out and set it aside. At this point you'll see the old impeller and it may be in one piece or it may be broken away. Well, sometimes you can actually grasp the end of this impeller with your pliers and pull it straight off of the motor shaft. In other cases it may be on there very tight and you could conceivably drill the end of that out and that will allow you to hit the motor shaft right below that. At that point you would have to remove the screws that secure the motor to the pump body and then using a drift just knock that motor and shaft right out through the back. We'll try this one first and see if it's going to come off. That one pulled off pretty easily. We'll discard the old impeller. You'll also see the seal assembly sitting on the bottom there. 
So next to remove that, we're going to turn the whole assembly around. And then we'll remove these three number 20 torque screws to secure the motor assembly to the pump assembly. And with the screws removed, you can just pull that pump right off the end. And all we'll need to do with this motor shaft is make sure that the flattened ends are nice and clean so you can take a, a rag and just wipe that up. Make sure there's no rust or corrosion on it. And just set it aside for now. Now the top portion of that old seal would have sat on the motor in this manner. Where it would have fit right on the end of the shaft. And that is a spring-loaded seal. But as you pull the motor, of course, the seal would pop off. Now the other half of that seal is still in the pump body and we need to remove it next. So coming in from the back side, you just take your screwdriver and just push that out. You'll see that the seal is a, has a rubber gasket all the way around it that seals to the pump body. And then the face of it is a ceramic surface that actually mates up against the bottom that spring type seal. So we'll discard all of those pieces. Now when installing the new seal, we'll need to first of all make sure that the opening that that seal sets in is free of any debris. Also make sure that the face of that ceramic portion of the seal has no cracks or abrasions. And then we'll carefully Set that down into the pump body. And with a little bit of moisture that is in that pump body, that will lubricate that seal enough that we can carefully push it into place just using your fingers. We don't want to use any hard tools that may damage that seal face. So once that's fully inserted into the pump body, we can next reinstall the motor. So carefully slide the shaft through that opening and then line up the three mounting points and you can't make a mistake with that. The motor will only fit one way on that pump body. So install all three of those screws and tighten them. Then next we're going to take the upper portion of that seal and you'll note that there's a little guide tube that will slide over that shaft. So again, we'll make sure that the carbon face on that seal has no chips or cracks or any type of abrasion on it. And we'll carefully slide that onto that shaft, push it down into position. And then next we'll put the impeller on top of that. Now you can moisten the inside of this where it will fit over that rubber portion on the top of the seal. And it also has two flat sides in there that will line up with the motor shaft. So you'll have to rotate it until it slides on easily and push it on the rest of the way. You should feel a little bit of spring action with it. Now when you put the cover on for that seal, there is a surface there that will press up against the brass end of that seal and that's what applies the tension. So simply thread that all the way into the pump body using our pliers, we'll just make sure that it's nice and snug. And now we're ready to put the whole assembly back in the dishwasher. Okay, now to put the motor and pump assembly back in, we're going to locate the inlet into that hose, making sure that we don't kink the hose any. We'll make sure it's pulled fully onto that pump body, rotate it into position, push it up into the base of the tub, And we'll take that mounting clamp, make sure it's inserted into the holes in the cross member on the frame. And then set that rubber bushing over the center of that motor shaft extension. We'll take the spring clip and reinstall that. 
and just friction fit that, press it down into place, and it'll stay there. We'll reconnect the wire harness, making sure that the locking tab engages. And we'll tighten the clamp on that inlet hose and just make sure that there are no kinks or ripples in that inlet hose that may create a leak. Next, we install the smaller hose on the side, make sure it's fully inserted. And using our pliers, we'll slide that spring clamp into position. And now we're all set to stand the dishwasher back up into position, push it into the cabinets, and reconnect our utilities. Okay, our next step will be to reinstall the lower wash arm. So just make sure that this plastic ring stayed in place. That sits right on top of that rubber gasket. And we'll set the wash arm down into the pump. Tighten it with your hands. And make sure that it has a nice snug fit though. Next, we'll put the lower dish rack in. Now our next step will be to push the dishwasher back into the cabinets, re-secure the top tabs, as well as reconnect the inlet water supply and the electrical supply. And once we've got that done, we can run a short test cycle to make sure that we have no leaks, because then we'll be able to view it from the front. And once we've satisfied ourselves that we have no leaks, we can go ahead and put the lower access panel on. And now that we have the lower access panel reinstalled, our repair is complete.